So right now I'm in the middle of recording the free Designing with Tailwind CSS video series I've been working on. And just yesterday I finished what I think is a really important lesson that talks about why you don't actually need to be extracting these custom CSS BEM style component classes all the time and why just littering your HTML with utility classes is actually way more maintainable than you think. Check it out. Behind the scenes, I've gone ahead and added a new section to our little splash page here that lists some popular destinations for people to take their workation. Now, the thing I want to direct your attention to is these sort of destination cards here. We've got six of these cards here. And if you go ahead and take a look at the code, you can see there's a lot of repetition. For example, the wrapper for the cards has all these classes and that's repeated six times. Here's the classes for the image, again, repeated six times. All the styles for all the links repeated six times. So when you see all this duplication, you might be tempted to use Tailwind's apply feature to extract some classes. Like you might head up to this div up here and think, okay, you know what? Maybe we should have something like a destination card class and maybe this can be like a destination card image and maybe here we have like a destination card title and while this technically works and does solve some of the duplication problem the list of utility classes repeated in the different elements of this component are really only a small part of what's actually been duplicated here the thing that we're leaving out is all of this structure it's really important that the image is on the left and that there's this div on the right and that this title goes in this h3 tag and that we have a p tag underneath and another div that that wraps the A tag. And no matter how many classes like this that you extract, you still have to repeat this entire HTML structure every time you want another instance of this destination card. There's a better way we can solve this problem. Let's back out our changes here so we're back to everything working with utilities. Now, up until now, we've been doing all of this work in just a plain, simple, vanilla HTML project. But the reality is, if you're building a site like Workcation that sort of has all this dynamic data down here, you certainly aren't hard coding in all of these different destinations into your HTML. You're almost certainly working with some sort of framework like maybe Ruby on Rails or Laravel or React or Vue or even building a WordPress theme. And when you're in an environment like that, you have a lot of power at your disposal that you don't have in a vanilla HTML template. So to show you how I would solve this problem in a real world project, I've converted our existing project into a very simple Vue CLI app. Now down here at the bottom of this file, you'll see that I have all of the data for all of these destinations loaded as just a simple array of JavaScript objects. So up here higher in the template where we have all of this stuff hard coded, if we have all this data available and we need to sort of dynamically display it based on the state of the system, we wouldn't just be sort of hard coding in all of this information. We would be spitting all this stuff out in a loop. So why don't we convert this over? So here we've got the uh, very first entry, Toronto here. I'm gonna take this wrapper element here on line 29, which is sort of the container for all of this stuff. And I'm gonna loop over all of our data so we can render one card for each city. So I'm just gonna say V4 destination in popular destinations, which is the name of the variable where we have all that data stored. Now over here on the right, you can see that we've got six more Toronto's added to the top of the list. So let's walk through making all this data dynamic and actually pulling it from the data that we have stored in our view component. So first things first is sort of this image. So I'm just gonna change this to destination.image URL. Next, I'm gonna change this alt tag to be destination.image alt. Then down here where we have uh, Toronto, the city title, we can just change this to destination.city. Down here where we have the price, we can change this to destination.averageprice. And then finally, where we have the number of properties that you can explore, let's just change that to destination.propertyCount. And now you can see on the right here, we've got all this data being pulled in dynamically, and then we have all the hard-coded stuff still below it. So let's remove all the hard-coded stuff since we don't actually need any of that stuff anymore. So we'll just kind of find the end here. I think this is probably right and see what we're left with, yep. And now if we go ahead and check everything on the right, you can see, yeah, we just have the dynamic data. Now, the thing that I think is interesting and worth pointing out here is all of a sudden we don't actually have a duplication problem at all. This combination of utility classes only exists in one place here on line 30. Same with this link, it only exists in one place here on line 36. So if you don't need to use one of these cards somewhere else on the site or somewhere else on this page, there's no longer any actual pressure to extract any extra CSS classes. 
you don't actually have any duplication. But say we did want to use one of these cards either somewhere else on this page or on another page on the site. How could we avoid the duplication then? Well, in that case, the best way to create a single source of truth for this component is to actually create a component, either a JavaScript component if you're working in an environment like Vue or React, or even a simple template partial if you're working in Rails, Laravel, or WordPress. Let's create a very simple Vue component here to show you what I mean. So over here in the sidebar, I'm going to create a new file in our components directory. I'm going to call it destination card .view. Now let's add a template section and a script section. And now we can copy the template over from our other file in this loop. So I'm just going to grab everything inside the loop because if you look at what's on the outside, this is really just specifying sort of the shape of the columns and stuff. And you'll see like on different screen sizes, this actually goes to a two column layout and then a three column layout. So we don't actually want to extract the columns. We just want to extract the cards inside the columns. So let's cut this stuff, head over to the destination card and paste this in clean up our formatting a little bit here, and then to make sure that we can actually pass in the data needed for this component, in view, we need to define a prop. So I'm just going to add a prop here called destination so we don't have to change our template. And now if we head back over to sort of our main template here, uh, we can import the destination card from dot slash components slash destination card. Uh, make sure to register our destination card component here. And now up on line 30, all we need to do is drop that into our template, passing through the current destination from the loop. And as long as we haven't made any mistakes, we should be able to scroll down and yep, all our destination cards are here. So now if we wanted to reuse this destination card in a different place on the site, all we'd have to do is pull in this component. And again, now because the entire template sort of has a single source of truth inside this component, there's still no pressure for us to extract any extra classes here. There's no duplication at all. If we wanted to change the border radius on every card, we'd just be able to come to this one file and change it to like rounded none, and now all of a sudden we have square corners, or rounded SM, and now we have small corners. This big long list of utility classes is no longer causing any maintenance issues at all.